Hi beaders, Happy New Year! Today's date is January the 18th, 2018. I know I am late to the party, but Happy New Year anyway. So, I think that the last tutorial I did was the beaded Christmas decoration and that went down quite well. So, thank you so much for um, liking that video. Great comments on that, so cheers for that. So what have I got for you today? Right, I thought we'd do an introduction to peyote. Now, you new people out there, you oldies who, who know all about how to do peyote, this probably isn't the video for you. But for anybody new to be Dean and a little bit shy about peyote, I'm going to show you how to do it today with a very, very simple version of peyote. And we're going to make something like this. Now this is a peyote beaded bangle. Now I bought these bangles, they come like this. They are a channel bangle. Now I bought mine from eBay and I believe there were six in a packet and they were around six pounds in uh, British money. I don't know how much that equates to in anybody else's money. And they're made of brass, um, so not a... Um, a precious material by, by any stretch of the imagination but I believe you could probably buy one in sterling silver but you will pay a little bit for it. So why are they called a channel bracelet then? So if you look closely you can see that there's a channel and so that channel there holds our beadwork in place and I will show you how it all fits together so don't worry. I can imagine thinking well how is it going to fit? Well I will show you how that happens. So that's the, the channel bangle that you'll need to get to do this project. And this is what we're hoping to look like. Now this is a fantastic way if you've got loads of delicas, odd, odd bits of delicas hanging around. And this is a great way of using up all those odd ones. So I made myself a bead soup. And as you can see in this one, there are blues. So I'm going to do today some greens. I thought getting ready for spring, some nice spring colours. So I made a little bead soup of all the greens that I got left over or, you know, little bits that won't make a full project. And I'm also going to be using a size, I like a 12 beading needle, but a 10. So a 10 or 12 beading needle and you can see this one's pre-bent. I love a bent needle. <laughs> and today's project, I'm going to be using six pound fire line, um, but one G thread would be adequate as well. Now we will be using quite a bit of this, um, so you may need to add it as you go along. And I have got a video up on YouTube that shows you how to add um, fire line. So you might want to go check that out as well. Very easy. Okay, guys. So also a pair of scissors to cut your thread um, and I think that's it for now. So go and get your gear together and let's get beading. So another little tip then on how to um, thread our needle because it can be a bit daunting when we look at our thread and we look at our needle and it's really hard to get that through. So a little tip, if you have some jewellery, flat nose pliers, then give the end a squidge, squidge it down and flatten it. And you will find then that bringing your needle up to the thread and it goes straight in because we've flattened it. And I've pulled myself off a arm span and an arm span to me is going from my fingers right across my across my cross across my chest to my other fingers, <laughs> and that is a arm span, right? So, so we're going to pull our needle through, leaving our working thread. We want to have um, a tail of about. Um, what about six inches just so we can tie in um, join it at the end okay so 
looking at our bangle then, we need to find out how many beads fit in the channel. And going from past experience, I know that this is going to be six beads. So three, four, five, and six. And just to double check, yes, that fits perfectly, doesn't it? So six beads on then. Putting our bangle aside. Bring those six beads down our thread. Leaving about a six inch to It's just enough that we can sew our ends in so nothing comes apart. Now I'm not going to put a stop bead on. You can if you so wish, but for me I'm not going to. So this, let me bring you in a little bit closer. Okay. So this is our working thread and this is our tail thread coming out here, okay? So peyote, we're going to pick up a bead any bead because we've got a bead soup and we're going to miss the first bead out and we're going to put our needle through the second bead okay put your fingers over the beads it just helps and pull slowly our thread through okay the idea being that we want not this mess that we've got now, but our beads to lie side by side. So our new bead that we've just put on to lie next to the bead. There we go. So we've got our first bead on and they're lying side by side. People get put off by this, but it's not a race, guys, you know. It takes a little bit of practice and patience to get it right, that's all. And after you've done the first couple of rows, everything falls into place. So pick up our next bead. So what happens in peyote then, then, is you can see, oh my naughty beads. There we are. Our thread is coming out of that bead. We miss a bead and pop our needle through the next bead, okay? Holding our beads between our thumb and finger and pull. Simple as that. And then it should pop into place, can you see? Side by side, good beads. You be the boss of the beads, don't let the, boss, don't let the beads be the boss of you. Pick up another 11 0 Delica. The thread's coming out of this bead, we're going to miss a bead and we're going to pop it into the next bead and just so happens to be the last bead in our pattern. And we should have this. Okay, so now we've got six beads that we started with and we've only added three beads so that means because we've only added three beads we're going to add three beads each time and the three beads will end up one here and then can you see where you've got a gap in between the beads I'll try get there better there you go that's a bit better you can see there's a gap in between each bead and all we're going to do is pop a bead in the gap that easy and believe that's it you you you've cracked peyote okay so pick up a bead and on our first one two beads together, pick up a bead and we're just going in the gaps, just filling the gaps in guys, that's it, simple, filling the gaps. And that's it, another row done, 
turn my work because I like to work that way. You see? So our working thread, pop in the next bead that's sticking up. up a bead, going through the next bead that's sticking up. It's not rocket science guys is it? Nothing to be afraid of, peyote. Pick up a bead, going through our last bead in the row. There we are, that's all there is to it. So you're turning my work and giving your work every now and again a, a good nice tug and if you do find that it's starting to um, come out of place just give it a tug just give you a roll in your beads as well we'll do that later as we as the piece gets bigger you'll find it might get a little bit loosey-goosey just roll the beads in between your thumb and your finger and give your thread a pull and that puts all the naughty beads in the place so we'll carry on then, picking up a bead, going through the bead that's sticking up, pulling our work through, picking up a bead, going through the sticky up bead, pulling our thread through. Pick up a bead, you have to excuse if you can hear the dog barking in the background, expecting a couple of deliveries today. There we go, bring in a little bit more just in case you're a little bit far off and it's, there we go, can you see? This is our working thread, so I'm going to turn it over. Pick up a bead. Got a bead sticking out. Pop our needle through. First bead in the new row. Pick up a bead. Go through the bead that's sticking out and pulling our thread through. Picking up a bead, going through the next sticky out bead, just happens to be the last one, and pulling our thread through. Ooh, I've touched myself. There we are. Turn our work, keep the tail thread out the way, okay, pick up a bead, go through the next bead that's sticking up, and pull, and that's all there is to it, let's keep going. So how have you gone on at Christmas then? Everybody happy? Everybody get what they wanted from Santa Claus? I did. Um, anybody who's new to my channel, um, you'll see that in my play I have uh, three playlists. I've got my beading that I've not long started um, doing. And I'm a metal detectorist. So I go out metal detecting. <laughs> Not everybody's cup of tea, but I really love it. Um, get to meet lots of new people because um, I'm a member of a Facebook club. And we meet at the weekends and we all go digging together. So we're just turning our work there. So you will find that if you are subscribed to this channel that um, and you've clicked on the notifications bell, that every time I put a new video up, um, you'll be notified if you click on that. And sometimes, obviously, 
um, it won't be a beading video, it will be um, a detecting, a metal detecting video or a sightseeing video. And they're quite fun and light hearted, the last one I did, I got dragged through a load of mud, but it wasn't just mud guys, it was cow poo and wee mud and it went over my boots and into my feet. And my boots are still stinking now. So if anybody's got any ideas on how to get rid of the smell of cow poo and wee out of the nylon bits in your leather boots, I'd be very much appreciated. We go, so just giving the beads a little bit of a roll and pulling the thread. And that keeps everything in check. No naughty beads. So give it a turn. So yeah, what other hobbies do you have, guys? Anything as mad as me? And how's the weather been? We've had nothing but rain. Down here in Cornwall, because I live in Cornwall in uh, the UK, we've had absolutely nothing but wind and rain. And hail, we've had hail. So just turning, guys. Picking up a bead, then we're through. I'm just going in between all the beads that are sticking up. So sticky up, going through. Okay. And I do apologise about my beat up nails. Look at them, what a state. Look at that. I did do a manicure the other day. Don't worry, look terrible. Um, in preparation, I was supposed to have done this tutorial. What day is it today? Thursday, Tuesday. So I did my knee, my knees. Got knees on the brain. I did my nails, and um, yeah, ended up not getting round to doing the video. And of course, all the other things that we do, don't we, girls? We do all them other things, dishes and cleaning and the rest of it. So, yeah, my nails got battered before I got a chance to do the tutorial. So I haven't got time to do another manicure. So, unfortunately, you'll have to put up with my nails. And, of course, with my other hobby, out detecting, um out in all these weathers and your hands get damaged quite easily and digging and messing in dirt <laughs> and quite a girly girl really as well people are quite surprised being quite a girly girl that I like such a hobby but I do I really enjoy it but you'd never guess that of me would you <laughs> And like I say, I also do sightseeing um, videos of, of around Cornwall, because Cornwall is beautiful. And um, a lot of American um, subscribers really enjoy the sightseeing videos. And some people have said, oh, I've got a nut. Some people have said to me, um, oh, have you thought about changing your channel? keeping everything separate and the answer to that is no at the end of the day you know I want to keep everything in one place and I have playlists and you know if you're a detectorist and one of my jewellery videos pops up on your notifications then you don't have to watch and the same goes for you guys who enjoy the um jewelry videos you don't have to watch me detecting or you don't have to watch the sightseeing ones but you never know you might actually might enjoy it but the guys because metal detecting is mainly a, a male dominated hobby so um unless they're a beader or the wife is interested in beading then they aren't going to watch, are they, guys? 
Never mind. I do have a couple of hard, fast fans from um, across the pond in America and Australia who don't mind the... Right, not here, guys. Don't mind the um, jewellery videos. Quite enjoy. Find them therapeutic, which is nice. Hobbies are great and they're good to be shared, aren't they, guys? You know? It's nice to share your hobbies. What's going on here? Darn thread. I've noticed this um, fire line of late hasn't been the best quality. I don't know what's going on. Let's give that a go now. Sorry for go out of shot. Don't know what's happening. I think I might have sorted it. And then again, I don't think I have. Oh well, I've sorted it. I'm just run me thread through my fingers. There we go. Okay, so we've only got what nearly an inch, but let's just have a look. See what it see? That fits in there lovely. Ooh, nice. Okay, so we've got a fair way to go guys so I'll stay with you a little bit longer and then we'll go to length and meet each other back when we're close okay so stitching into the beads so if you are a new person to beading um, is there something that you particularly like to learn? I'm thinking about doing a little series on on new stitches, you know. So this is even count peyote. We could learn odd count peyote, which is quite a bit more challenging because you have to do a funky turn on one side. On one side, uh, so like now we're coming up to the end of the row, aren't we? It is normal. Oh. So, you know, it's just like that. We turn over our work and carry on beading. But with odd count peyote, it's a little bit different. As there's no bead at the end to make the two, if you know what I mean. It's a bit hard to explain in, unless you're doing it. You have to do a funky turn to get in position. I've got another knot. Hmm. Sometimes it's right. It does help if you do if you are getting knots is to run some beeswax. As you can see, mine's run some beeswax through your material, your thread. That helps a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. All over the show, aren't I? So give it a roll between the fingers and pull it through, turn and off we go again. So yeah, I was talking about Santa Claus, wasn't I? What um, what's he bought you all? Well, it's, as I explained, I do um, metal detecting videos and sightseeing videos. So I really wanted something for my camera. So I must have been very, very good last year because Santa Claus actually dropped me off a gimbal um, which is a piece of equipment that you put your camera on um, i.e. phone or GoPro whichever and it holds everything so your filming is straight so you're not wobbling all over the show it, it's a fantastic bit of kit Plus, also, I asked for an, a, an external mic for when I'm out and about because people were complaining that about the wind noise, etc. So, Santa Claus very kindly, very kindly bought me an external mic as well as a gimbal. So, how good was I? And um, we had family come over spend Christmas and my brother 
who works in Hong Kong. Him and his wife came over for Christmas. My nephew from Australia, who I haven't seen since he was a young boy, seven. And um, he came over from Australia with his beautiful girlfriend. And then my youngest son from the army, he came with Chelsea, his beautiful girlfriend. And then my eldest son, who lives around the corner from me in Cornwall, came and with his son. And we all had a lovely Christmas together. It was very loud and noisy, but wow, what a time. It's, you know, that's what family is, isn't it? it? What Christmas, I mean, is is about. It's not about gifts, really, and the rest of it. It's about family time together, isn't it? And um, making some wonderful memories. Yeah, so we had a, a lovely time together, which was nice. But let's get back to the beading then. So we've turned... So you can see our, can you see now that what I was meaning about when you first start, it's more difficult to start. But as you go on, it um, gets a lot easier and you know what you're doing. So into our sticky up bead. Oh dear, I'm having a right time with this thread. Like I say guys, if it is that you run out of thread, I have a video up on YouTube, you'll see it in my playlist of how to join thread in your beadwork. Um, and it shows you how to join fire line and it shows you how to join a 1G thread. And it's very, very easy to do when you know how. Not a case of just tying a knot and hoping for the best. We need to do it properly, don't we guys? So maybe go and check that video out. So I think you may be au fait now with, with this. We'll go a bit further and I'll check back in with you shortly. Keep beading. Well, you can go for a wee if you want. <laughs> Catch you in a minute. So how are you guys getting on then? Me, I've... Almost run out of threads. So I'm just about to add some more. I've only got a little bit left. But let's have a look to see how far we've got on our bangle. Let me hold it there. Bring it round. Let me just put you out a little bit. There we go. Mine's unintentionally... I don't know if you can pick that up. It looks a bit like camouflage. So maybe I'll use this for when I get to go out detecting. <laughs> anyway. I've got just over half. Halfway. So I reckon another arm span. And I'm done. So what you need to do guys. Is. Work. Until it's almost touching. So bring it to here and then we'll take it from there, okay? So keep going. Are you doing your little tricks by rubbing your beads? Don't forget to rub your beads and pull your thread. It just keeps everything nice and tight. Okay. It just looks like camouflage. <laughs> oh dear. So I'm going to... Add some thread, um, like I said, if you need to add some thread, go
go and check out my um, video in the beading playlist and there'll be one there that will show you how to add fireline and you will need a lighter so there you go so I'm going to add some thread and carry on and I will meet you guys back up once you've nearly got your beadwork all the way around like I say I'm just over halfway now just the last little bit to go are you all zoned out it's a very um, nice project to zone out and think about things you know I'm like a little detecting ring <laughs> At least it won't make the machine go off, would it? Could you imagine making having a metal ring on? That's one thing you don't do when you're out metal detecting. You don't have a, have any uh, jewelry on because you set your detector off when you're looking for your stuff. <laughs> right. I'll catch up with you in a moment then. Okay. So who's sped along then? You've either gone too far or not far enough. So. I thought I'd stop and join you and show you where we're to. So, the idea is that the two pieces, two ends, should I say, come together. And as you can see, they don't quite meet. Now, there is something that we need to be aware of when we're going to what they call zip the POT together. And if you imagine teeth on a zip-up jacket and you look at that, you can see that when they go together, when it zips up, they go together like that. And that's what happens with POT. We need to, if you imagine that these are our beads and we need to put them together like that. So what I mean by that is if I just pull you in... Ooh, Jane, you go too fast. If you look at these two ends, you can see that if they weren't together, they'd fit together. Okay. So, in other words, on one side, you need to have the gaps at one end and then the sticky up. And then on the other side, it needs to have the sticky up bead and so they go together like that does that make sense so I thought we'd do the last couple of um, rows together okay so as we can see then I'm just going to carry on stitching Adding my beads. One at a time. Right, turn. Let's see how that looks now on the bangle, shall we? So just bring the bangle into play. And these need to go together where you rub the beadwork like this, push it up and then bring them together. So if I was to add more beads, more rows of beads, it'd be too slack and the beadwork would fall off. Okay, so it needs to be just right. If you want me to measure it for you, I will. So... I'll do it in centimetres for you. Oh, no cent oh, there's threads. It measures approximately just under. Oh, where are we there? Hang on, guys. Let me just put this on the flat surface, otherwise, we won't be getting a, a, a true reading. So just bear with. 21 and a half centimetres almost. So it's almost 21 and a half centimetres. 
almost so that's the figure that you uh, you you are aiming for okay right let's try and um, zip this baby up so let me just reiterate one side Can you see how they'll zip up? So the teeth, if you like, are on the opposite bead, on the opposite ends, so they fit together. Okay? Can you see that clearly? I don't know if you can see it clearly or not. So one end is like that, and the other end... Wow! I'm looking at it okay. <laughs> Can you see? So when they go together, they fit like a glove, as they say. Right. So, how do we get these babies to stay together? Okay. Some people use a bit of tape to put on their uh, bangle. I don't. So my tail end is opposite, that's another way of looking at it. My tail end, that's the tail, here this is the tail, is at one end and my working thread is on the other. And all we're going to do is zip this together. So zipping together them, my tail's coming out of that side, I go into the top bead on the other side. And don't pull, you don't need to pull anything yet. And then just weave over to the other side. Sorry guys, I was out, out of frame. Okay, you can see it's and go again onto the opposite side. I don't think green has been the best colour to, uh, it's too light to do a tutorial with, but hey. And then back over to this side. I mean, you could also get a couple of beads at the same time. Going over from one side to the other. Okay. And finishing off on this side. Okay. So you end up with your working thread and your tail thread together. Yeah, so just giving your working thread a bit of a pull and we can see that that's on there now. How good's that? You've just made a bangle. Right, to finish these off, I'm just going to back you away a little bit because you're a little bit close. You don't need to be that close. Okay. We're going to tie the working thread and the tail thread together so just an overhand knot so like that and pull it down nice and tight and snug and then again I feel the thread will behave the bees have been good it's the thread that's been naughty okay Right, now then, you can't even tell where we've joined it, look, there's our working, there's, well, there's our threads and you can't even tell where it's come together. So all I'm going to do now then, this is my working thread here, I'm just going to come down the beads in a diagonal fashion. Give my needle a wiggle because you don't want to break any beads, not at this point. And pull. And that almost clicks so you can't even see where the knots were now. Okay. And I'm going to come out the other way. Just going to pause you guys. I've just got a phone call coming through. 
sorry about this right sorry about that I'm back so carrying on then pulling our thread through going at an angle through some beads now we don't really need to put any knots in this beadwork because if we weave through enough that's absolutely fine okay and you can change directions just gently pushing our needle through some beads nice and slowly don't force anything so I'm just going to work back again Maybe not through as many beads, Jane, would be a good idea. There we go. Move the tail thread out of the way. Pull it through. And again. You can do this as many times as you feel secure. So you can go up just a couple, and mind our tail thread, and back down a couple, and up a couple. And change direction and go over that away. Okay. And go back down a couple. Over that way. In fact, I'm going to go this way. So did you find the beadwork therapeutic? This is just a easy way into um, peyote, I thought, and doing the bangle rather than um, doing with the clasp. But if you're ready to move on, then do it if you're able to, you feel confident. You carry on. Right, and I'm happy at that, so I'm going to cut my end off there. And all that's left to do is exactly the same. So take my needle off this one. Just flatten the end down on this side. Put my needle through. Okay. And then with our tail end, that's why I like to leave a, a longish tail end so I'm not trying to work with a tiny bit of thread. And again, just weaving our tail through. Some beads. Couldn't see where I was going then, can I? <laughs> Just weaving. The needle in and out the beads. I'm going to go back up that way a bit. If I get through all that, but I can try.
and that's it. Job's a good one as they say and just cut the thread off. And there we have our beady bangle. It does look really like a camo <laughs> camouflage bangle. Now somebody did ask about what can you do with 6-0 um, seed beads. I will be doing a tutorial on what to do with 6 C beads and I thought we could do a wrap. So with a wrap you need some either some leather cord and um, some beads of your choice and that will be probably be the next tutorial. So there we are guys. Our beady bangles. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe. Be happy to have you along on any of the videos that I do and hope to see you again some more. Take extra special care of yourselves. A very happy 2018 to each and every one of you. Thank you for all the support that you've given me so far on our short beading life, that's for sure. But let's hope that lots more come out in 2018. So take care guys, thumbs up, give us your thumbs, 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 give us your thumbs, 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 take care, bye, bye, <laughs> oh it's been a long day, take care guys, see you soon, bye now.